elementary music teacher friend, you love what you do, but you might feel unappreciated and in fact, unseen some days. You may even feel like you're on a music teacher island and just want to connect with other music teachers who can relate to both your struggles and wins when it comes to teaching elementary music. I get you and understand completely the feelings you're having. That's why each and every week, the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast will provide you with solo and guest episodes that will help you realize you're not alone in your music teaching journey. Throughout each episode, my goal is for you to be able to walk away with actionable steps and ideas to help you feel like you're ready to take on the new week with whatever challenges may be thrown your way. Hi, I'm your host, Jessica Peresta, and I'm so glad you're here. Whether you're at home, in your car, in the shower, or wherever else you're listening, grab your cup of coffee or whatever other beverage is nearby and listen in to the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast. I'm Jesse Lubinsky. I'm Donnie Piercy. Hi, I'm Jeffrey Heil, hosts of the Partial Credit Podcast, a part of the Education Podcast Network. Just like the show you're listening to now. Shows on the network are individually owned and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other interesting education podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com. Welcome back to the podcast. I am so excited to be joined by Bill Henry. He has been on here before, but today we are going to talk all about recorders, specifically teaching recorder in an engaging way. And so before we dive in, Bill, they may or may not have heard you on the podcast before, but if not, would you just go ahead and reintroduce yourself to the audience? Yeah, absolutely. So first of all, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. And um, yeah, so I've been teaching. Whew, I just finished up my 17th year of teaching, which is kind of crazy. Like I, I, I still kind of can't believe that, you know, but, um, and like, I was, I was starting to figure out, like, I think I'm going to start entering into the time where I've been in a profession longer than I've like not been in a profession. You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. that point where you cross over from being like in, in school and then, you know, the years outside of school, are more than what you were before. So anyway, it's just like, I don't know. It's just, it's just these weird games you play when you get old, I guess. But uh, so, yeah, I've been doing that for, yeah, just finished up year 17 and um, teaching for the Maryland public school system, pre-K through fifth grade, um, and then also chorus as well. So Mm -hmm. uh, super fun. I'm at one school, a lot of the, a lot of the time, Teachers are split between two schools, especially in the county that I teach for in Maryland. Um, but I was lucky enough to get just one school. So so I do that. That's my day job, um, my main gig, I guess. But then uh, on the side, I also uh, have a YouTube channel called Mr. Henry's Music World. And um, that's just been tons of fun. Um, currently, it's over 50,000 view or 50,000 subscribers. Um with uh yeah like millions of views on the channel it's it's kind of surreal i uh it's but it's a lot of fun i have a a lot of fun doing it so and on that channel there's a lot of music education resources uh for teachers and um you know rhythm play alongs and boom whacker play alongs and recorder play alongs so a variety of things out there that um that teachers are using all across the world so Mm -hmm. yeah it's just been a lot of fun and um you know continuing to work on videos for that. Um, I'm in the summer mode right now. So this is when I start to kind of piece together other programs. That's what I'm, I'm more actually working on a ukulele program right now. So yeah, so that's, that's been a lot of fun. I've been doing like ukulele, ukulele, ukulele rap, you know, all these, (laughs) all these fun songs that, uh, that are just swirling around my head. I'm finally able to put them down. But, um, so the, um, yeah, and then I also have a, a podcast that I uh, co-host and and create and produce uh, called the Music Podcast for Kids, and uh, that's with a good friend of mine, and he's also a music teacher as well, Bruce Fight, and um, so yeah, we have a lot of fun doing that. We're getting ready to do like a, a retreat where we're gonna go away for a couple days and just write. So that's what. So I'm excited to do that, and um, yeah, that that show's been featured in the New York times, which was pretty wild when we found that out. Um, and, and recently we're actually, um, have a partnership with a company. They service 
libraries, like 5,000 libraries across the United States. And they're coming out with this new device, which I'm not even allowed to talk about, but it's oh, a gosh. new device they're putting out. And um, our shows are going to be on those devices. So that'll be pretty cool. Yeah. So we're, we're excited. That's in 2024. So next year. Oh um, but yeah, so, so yeah, that's, that's what I got going on. Oh my gosh. Um, listeners, you cannot see me, but I am smiling ear to ear because Bill and I have known each other for a while now. I can't even remember the exact date we met, but also, yeah, we've... I just love seeing the growth when you just put an idea out there just because mm, yeah. you had a passion for it. Like you said, I just wanted to share some fun activities for teachers on YouTube. Yeah. I have this passion for doing a podcast that kids can use in the classroom. And it's just grown because of your well consistency, but also your passion, I feel like really drives the work you put into the world. And so oh, thank congrats you. to you. That's awesome. Oh, I didn't thanks. even know about the growth you've experienced. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a lot of fun. And, and you're right. It's it's something that I really enjoy doing, you know, mm -hmm. like I can't wait to get down into my studio here to uh, to work on things and, and get the videos going. So, yeah, it's a lot of fun. So exciting. So when you were talking, I didn't even send this in the questions I sent to you, by the way, but I was just thinking about you as a teacher and all the fun videos you've created and you've put on YouTube and things like that. Is this kind of the same way you teach your students in the classroom? Like just have like such yeah. a fun style and it's very interactive. Like I can just yeah. imagine how much fun your music classroom is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it is similar. Yeah. I mean, I'm, and sometimes I even get a little carried away with like the dad jokes and stuff, <laughs> you know, I'll just go off on tangents sometime. Um, but uh, it, there's a joke that I usually do where else I'll, I'll say, yeah, do you guys know what LOL means? And they go laugh out loud. <laughs> and then um, what about idk does anyone know what that is mm -hmm. and they say it means i don't know and i'm like ah see that's what everyone says everyone tells me that they don't know what idk means <laughs> stuff like that yeah. I, you know i go yeah. i even looked it up on google and google said that idk means i don't know so or that or google doesn't even know what idk means so you know i do i joke like that yeah all the time with the kids. And really I, I do that just to, that's just creating connections, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, but, but I definitely, and, and I think this probably is the case for most people. You're, you're kind of in a character when mm -hmm. you're up there and, and that's, I'm, I'm definitely um, have this kind of character of this teacher who like, you know, that it's, it's almost like, do you even go home or do you just stay here? You know, it's like that kind of a thing where the, it's almost like I'm not like a real person in a way, uh -huh, you know, uh -huh. but um, yeah, I just, I do try and have a lot of fun, a lot of humor and, um, but then, you know, but, but I'll snap kids right back to making sure we're learning about things. So, right. but uh, yeah, it is, it is a lot of fun. So. Well, you're, you're breaking down barriers and building relationships with them. And right. when you're having fun, they know they can trust you. And so when you do need to right. redirect, it's not as hard as when, right. you know, like the advice I got when I first got into teaching was just be hard, 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 and then you can mm. loosen up. And I did try that. And then I went, this doesn't work for me. Like, cause yeah, I'm right. very sarcastic too. And I'm like, I can see the kids faces looking at me like, man, she's pretty mean. And I'm like, it's not like, that wasn't my goal. <laughs> it's just what I was told. And so <laughs> Yeah. Anyways, I think it's completely fine to use your own personality too. And sure. nobody really tells you that. So yeah. 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 Well, we're going to talk about teaching the recorder. We could have talked about so many different areas in this podcast episode because you do so much, but I really want to touch on the recorder because I know this is a passion of yours and something you've created videos around. And so why do you think you enjoy teaching the recorder to your students? Well, I'll tell you this. I didn't enjoy it in the beginning. In fact, when I first started teaching, because when, when I went in college, we didn't really learn how to teach the recorder. We learned how to teach the trumpet and all of those, uh, all those other methods courses on the instruments, which they were preparing us for if we were in a band. And, yep. and I get that. But yep. they didn't teach us how to, uh, how to teach the recorder. Mm -hmm. And um, which, you know, it's a very delicate instrument ultimately. So and then even and I had a great person who I student taught with, but it was just at the time she wasn't doing recorder. So it was just like I just kind of missed it. So when I first started teaching, it, I don't think I started recorder for the first two years. I just didn't even do it. 
because I was like, kind of like, I don't, I don't know what to do, right? <laughs> so, uh, and then I started to kind of, I think at one point, because it wasn't like demanded by our county that you had to do it, but then eventually they're like, okay, you guys need to be doing recorder in third mm. grade. So, okay, fine. So I started to kind of figure it out. And I remember that first class that I did it. And, and this was like, before we had the smart board in there, I think we had like those old projectors that had like in order to display something, it had to be that like translucent paper. I right? had that too. Yes. You know what I'm <laughs> it's talking crazy. About? Yes. Yeah. It and like it always the smells like it's on fire. Even yeah. It's yeah. Not. Right. Yeah. Yes. And I'm yeah. like, are, is this okay? No, no smoke's yeah. coming Do out. I have okay. to turn this off. <laughs> yeah. Right. It was just like, <laughs> yeah. You know, it was, it, it just wasn't fun. Like, a, mm -hmm. you know, it's like all dusty and I don't know, it's just, you know, so. And I remember that, you know, okay, we're going to play the B note. And it was just like, Wah! you know, I just had no idea of what to do. And so it, it, it really just, I was like, okay, I got to go back to the drawing board and really figure this out. So I just started researching and, you know, year after year, you're trying new things and there's only so much time. So sometimes you only get one crack at trying to teach a certain concept. So just over time, I started to get more comfortable with it. And I think just once you get more comfortable with something, you start to enjoy it. Um, and and the kids were starting to sound really good. And and I was getting to a point where, you know, these the kids were progressing really well. And um, but even then, you know, I mean, it was I was enjoying doing it. I couldn't wait to do it. I usually started uh in January. Um, after Christmas, but then like I started to push it back, like, yeah, maybe I'll start in October. And then maybe I'll start, you know, I just started to like mm -hmm. push it back to because I just wanted to have the kids learning it. And um, and so it was, yeah, it just became more and more fun. But I did feel like a lot of what was out there was kind of like too fast. Mm. So and so I, I would notice like some students like in recorder karate, it starts with hot cross buns. Yeah, it's it, it just seems like it was it was always too too fast, and you would have some mm -hmm. students that just couldn't play it, no matter how much you yeah. worked with them, and it was it was kind of frustrating. And in you know in that program, that's in order to get the white belt, right? They have to be able to play it. So some kids, it would just be like kind of a struggle to even just get that one belt. So. Yep. I don't know. It just, the the whole thing, I just started to grow. It was just kind of like starting to get a little mundane and I was getting annoyed with it. And mm -hmm. so I started to create videos for it. And that's really, I think that for me sparked it even more. It was like, okay, this is, this is a lot of fun now. Um, because I was able to have something that was a little more hip than, yeah. than what was there before. So, um, so yeah, I, you know, I, now I just, you know, I just, really enjoy doing it. And, and I think the biggest re reason why I like it is because it allows me to teach a bunch of different music concepts through this instrument. And, you know, I mean, logistically, the instrument is, it's really perfect for these students who are, you know, I mean, they're only five bucks, they're easy to get, you know, things like that. Like logistically, it's easy. And, and if, yeah. you, if you do a classroom set, they're easy to wash, you know, things like that. Right, right. So it's just, um, I just think it's just a perfect fit for, for uh, the elementary music classroom. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, I can teach those concepts through this instrument. So mm -hmm. yeah. well, one thing you said really made me think of, um, I did a Facebook live today and I was talking about the fact that if you don't enjoy something you're teaching, a lot of times mm -hmm. your students won't enjoy learning it. Oh yeah. Right. Because if you're, you know, it, it's record or anything, but like if you're like, it could be a particular song and they can read your body language more than you realize, you know, mm -hmm. not, you know, not just the words coming out of your mouth, but if you're just kind of like ho-hum about it or you're, <laughs> they can kind of tell that versus you sure. just said, now I'm excited to teach it. And I'm sure the student feedback you've gotten, even with just seeing the way they're excited to pick that instrument up mm -hmm. versus the way the feedback you used to see. Is that different as well? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And and something that um, I noticed too is they don't get burnt out as quickly. Mm -hmm. Like there was, I think there was a point where they would just be like, oh, we're still doing the recorder. Or <laughs> yes. And I'm actually kind of, I've been experiencing that with the ukulele as well. 
recently. And so this is kind of like why I'm starting to create a ukulele curriculum. Um, because th what I find with the recorder is that they just, they can't wait for the next thing to come in. So, um, so it's never, and, and I don't feel burnt out from it either. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that's, that's, uh, and, and yeah, they're definitely excited, I think, because yeah, because the teacher's excited. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, fun. yeah, that leads perfectly into my next question is kind of tying into what I just said is it's important to teach the recorder in a way that's engaging to our students. Mm -hmm. So what are some activities or ways of teaching that you feel like would help teachers to do this or ways that you've engaged your students when it comes to recorder? Sure. Yeah. So this one's a pretty simple one. I mean, you, anyone could do it. You don't need any technology for this, really which is nice um, if, if that is an issue. But um, yeah, this one's just, it's very simple, very simple game. Um, I have post-it notes and the main reason for post-its is because they can stick to your head. So I'll tell you a little about that later, but, um, but basically if let's say you're working on B, A, and G. So this would be like something you would use as a review tool. Uh, and the kids are just each going to get a post-it note and they're just going to write a four note melody. Now they're not going to write it like on the lines and spaces of the staff. You could do that later. That would be kind of like an upgrade to what, what this is. Mm -hmm. Um, but they're literally just writing B, A, G, A, right? So just a four note melody and then they stick it on their head and usually it sticks pretty well. And, you know, you could just use cards too. It doesn't have to be posted, but yeah. so they stick it to their head and I play some music either on the piano or just press play on, you know, a, a CD or, or what have you. Um, and they just walk around the room, you know, they're mixing and matching, just, you know, just kind of going around and then you pause, they have to find someone and then they play the melody that's on the student's head. Very simple. But what's great about it, and and I think this can happen a lot when teaching recorder, uh, where you're, where kids, you can have kids sitting a lot because you're instructing, you're showing them things, or they're playing stuff up on the board, or even if they're working by themselves, practicing something, they're still kind of just sitting there. So this mm -hmm. just allows the kids to just get up and move, and all they're doing is just they're just playing a bunch of different. Uh, patterns using B, A, and G. That's all there is to it. Mm -hmm. But they are really engaged with it because they're just moving. I think just yeah. that little bit of movement and that little bit of control that you have as the teacher with stopping the music and starting the music and all that just allows it to be a real enjoyable, um, you know, review or, or what have you. So, mm. so that's, that's one you could use. Um, Something that I do on top of that, if I have time or I might just do this as another, uh, it's kind of nice because the students have already written these um, little melodies. So it's it's kind of there already, or you could take them and keep them and use it for later. But I do a game called Stump the Teacher where um, I'll usually pick one student who's like the ringer, right? The kid who's really good. You know that they... Mm -hmm. It, they they know what's going on and they're the person that needs to check the other students. So what the so they've had they have their melodies. I'll say, don't let me see it. Okay. And what you need to do is you need to play the melody that's on your post-it. And I'm gonna tell you what notes you're playing back. Mm. And so they and if they if they stump the teacher, they get 10 Mr. Henry Bucks, which is a big deal, okay. So I have Mr. Henry Bucks. It's the simplest thing. It's just these bucks of me with a, you know, just being goofy. And uh, if a student answers a question correctly, they get um, a Mr. Henry Buck. They put their name on it. It goes into a bin. And every quarter I pick two names and they get a music prize. Ukulele. That's fun. Quarters. Yeah. So it's very yeah. simple, but they love it. They love the Mr. Henry Bucks thing. So anyone can use that as well. But um so they get 10 Mr. Henry bucks, which is like a, that's like a lot, right? If they can stump the teacher. So they'll play the the melody, but I have that student who knows what the notes are just to make sure that they're actually playing it correctly. And uh, sometimes, you know, you can usually tell what note they're trying to play. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, you know, I think you're trying to play B-A-G-A, -A, but 
Um, is that what it is on you? You know, and you know, they don't ever stump me. But what's great about that is the um I tell them after that I said, well, we're gonna be working on this because they the first time you do it, it's like magic. They don't but how do you know how to do that? How can you pick that out? And um, so I, you know, it's 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 cool because it allows me to then talk about, well, we're going to be learning how to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and so that that kind of leads into some more ear training that we'll do throughout. So, um, yeah, so those are some some fun games that are that are engaging and uh, easy for any teacher to do. So, yeah, I think I love the simplicity of it. You know, I mm -hmm. think we sometimes try to overcomplicate things yeah. and you're right. Not everybody has a ton of technology. I know when I started, I sure as heck didn't. And so mm -hmm. I would try to find simple things like that, that I could use sticky notes or note cards or something simple like that. Um, I remember like a game I did instrument four corners and yeah. um, they would have to walk to a corner or they would do a similar game where they had the note card of what instrument they were and they had to guess, but there's That's so cool. many things, you, you know, games you can play that are are simple like that, but still engaging. And something you also said is they're not sitting. And I agree right. with that so much. Um, I feel like I can imagine how much classroom management issues that just resolves on its own just by sure. having students move around the room. And they're, they're engaging their feet and hands and minds at the same time because we yeah. all know if they're sitting still sometimes. And there's, of course, you're going to have to have students sit sometimes. But I notice the longer they're sitting and not doing something the you know that's when they're going to talk and they're going to bother and their recorder is going to be tossed in the air or whatever else right and so <laughs> i love that you have them moving around um what are ways when you are having them sit and instructing them in that way or they're looking at something let's say on a smart board or whatever it might be how do you keep them engaged when they are needing to sit for longer periods of time yeah so i mean uh i'm i'm using slides on the smart board mm -hmm. um and there's also you know, videos that are included within the curriculum that kids are engaging with. So mm -hmm. even just like a video about the quarter note, just a review. I mean, they, they know by third grade, they know what a quarter note is, of course. But um, things like that are, are in there, these little short animated, well, they're not fully animated, semi-animated um, videos. And, but, you know, they're only about two or three minutes, mm -hmm. right? So we're able to go from this slide to this. And then there's games that I have where kids are going up and, um, you know, p creating a rhythm, mm -hmm. you know, with, and, and then we'll play a note using that rhythm that they've created. So there's a lot of different yeah. things going on that allow us to be fully engaged, yes. you know, the, the whole time. And, and and then there's there's always going to be that time. I usually give students time to just practice a song that they're working on, so that um, so that even just that ability for them to get with a partner, work on things, me floating around, and they're just kind of doing their own thing. Just even that really breaks up the class, you know. And uh, so we have forty five minutes of time, which you know is a good it's a good bit of time. Um, so that's, you know, that you really have to make sure that there's a bunch of things going on throughout. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I was I'm laughing because I'm thinking of, you know, your admin walks by right when it just sounds like a hectic chaos happening in there when oh, everybody's right. playing something different, but you know, they're learning. It's just, it's hysterical because yeah. I know some understand and they know there's learning taking place and others are like, is he just, is it just a free for all today in there? Free, What's going right. on? <laughs> You're like pretty much every day. This yeah. is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, right. I love it. It's like the the noisiest music classrooms. I mean, I think the, the kids are having fun and they're learning at the same time. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah that's great. Sure. So when teaching the recorder, having a good foundation is really important. And so yeah. you may have already touched on this, but what are activities that help set students up for success right from the get go? Yeah. So with the recorder specifically, I mean, getting the understanding of the airflow is super important um, before they're even getting the instrument in their hand. And so a really fun game that we've been doing, um, I've been doing it for a couple of years now, is um, this ping pong battle game. And so basically you have a group of either three or four, and I use, like I have the pancake style drums, so I'll use that. 
because it's a little bit raised off of the floor and each kid gets a ping pong ball and a straw. And there's four different levels to this game. So the first level is, okay, everyone put your ping pong ball onto the pancake drum and everyone blow all the balls off as fast as you can. So I'll say, ready, set, go, right? And, the, <laughs> and they just go flying off. So that we just kind of have fun with that. Um, then after that, we do, we'll just have one of the balls on there and same, it's the same idea, mm -hmm. but you're trying to each, each student is trying to get that ball to the other, to the other side. So if you get it off to the other side, you score and win. So this is, this is just kind of prepping for the next two. So really we're just having fun with it, but ultimately we're the, the idea is to show them that in level one and level two, this is the air that we do not use mm -hmm. when playing the recorder. Then we get to level three. Level three is one ball back on the stand and um, the students are going to, they have to use their air. The ball has to continually move and they have to use their air to keep the ball on the drum and whoever does that the longest out of the group wins, you know, so that group would win a Mr. Henry buck uh, each within that group. Right. So they're just trying to keep that And the big deal with this one is that the ball has to be in continuous motion as they're blowing through the straw. Then the last level is all four balls or three balls are on the pancake drum and you're trying to keep all of them up there. And so this is really just allowing students to really understand the type of air that you need for the recorder. And it's going to be that, I'll, I'll even call it, lower. we got to use level four air. Mm. Remember that? That was when we, and, and the thing that I love about this probably the most is the fact that I'm able to recall that. Mm -hmm. And so they're physical, they physically remember being in that situation of, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, I remember I had to use really, really soft air mm -hmm. in order to keep that, keep all four of them up on the pancake drum. So that's what I think I love about it the most um, is that, that I can recall that and then they can physically remember what that felt like and then apply that type of air um, into the recorder. So that is a, a really great activity that I think has helped a lot with, with the intonation. Um, my uh, principal who came in and observed a third grade recorder lesson, this was his, I think it was his 20th year. And, um, He's re he was retiring and he's, he said at the end of it, he's like, I was a little nervous coming in here, Bill, for the quarter, <laughs> you know, and he's very supportive, you know, uh, you know, just awesome. And, um, he's like, but I've never heard third grade recorders like that. Like they're all playing everything correctly and it sounds really good. Mm -hmm. And so that was really cool to hear. And I was just like, yeah, well, it's all about the airflow, you know, I mean, and it really is. So yeah. to start with games like that, um, you know, I've, uh, there's, I've never done this one, but I've heard of the blowing the bubbles. So you could have kids, you know, you can have bubbles and they're going out and they, you know, you, you're trying to get them to blow a really big bubble, right? Because anytime you do that, you're using that real gentle air. So that could be certainly an activity you could do, um, I don't know if I do it inside, but outside, you know. Yeah. Um, but um, you know, so those are some activities that are really great that allow kids to just get that idea of what kind of air is being used. Uh, and then, you know, really it's just I'm constantly drilling down left hand over right, left hand over right. So and and I made a song that goes left hand over right, left hand over right. So there's a song that the kids learn how to sing. And so that that's always fun because then you can just recall that song, yeah. you know? So, uh, yeah, really just uh, not even worrying about getting the recorder in their hands. I think, I, I know for me, I don't, I don't know if everyone's like this, but for me, I was always like, I got to get them playing. We got to, we got to play. Right. And I've learned that now, 
now I'm going to take my good old sweet time having them learn these basics mm -hmm. of how to, how to use the air correctly. Um, talking about, you know, whispering to some people do whisper do, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know which one's right. Uh, I do whisper yeah. too, but you know, um, so, you know, that's, that's kind of, uh, that's, that's something that, that I spend a lot of time doing to make sure that that foundation is good. So. I love that. I think that's genius. I never would have ever thought of that, <laughs> of having <laughs> kids blowing different, you know, amounts of balls on a plate or a, a pancake yeah. drum yeah. to practice different air speeds. I just, yeah, it's just like genius because like you said, um, it might be the band person in me as well. I played clarinet all the way through band and um, all the way through college. And it was all about play the instrument now, like play, play, play. But, right. I, but when I stopped to think about, and I haven't done that in forever, beginning band, like my very first week ever of clarinet, my band instructor had us clapping rhythms, had us learning how to put it together, had us uh, practice blowing onto our hand, to practice blowing. Yeah. And I thought, wow, I think we sometimes forget like our experience, maybe not even with recorder, but learning any instrument of how, and every, every instructor is different, of course, but sure. we all started with some kind of basic somewhere. But I yeah. know we are excited to jump in and teach it. And so we're just like, okay, play. But that's when you get a lot of the kids, like you said, you're having to constantly remind them, which you will anyways. But when you have those basics in place then reminding them of how to blow the air into the instrument, I can imagine how much easier that is. It's yes. not, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely easier. And and like I said, it's, it's also really great just to be able to recall because kids are still mm -hmm. gonna do it, right? They're mm -hmm. still going to do it. They're still gonna use their right hand, yes. you know? Um, even after it's like, we sang this song 50,000 times, <laughs> I know, you know, but yes. you know, they'll still they're mm -hmm. just not paying attention. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, I mean, there's things you can do with that, you know, putting a wristband on that left hand for students who are continuously forgetting, you know, things like that. So, that. um, yeah, yeah. The basics, I, I just, I have found myself more interested as through my teaching career, more interested and really focusing on how to get the basics mm -hmm. just super structured and uh, to give them foundation to do other things. So, yeah, you know, I'm, I was thinking back to, you know, working with fifth graders and the fact that the left hand, right hand thing, you just think it's just going to naturally, they're just going to get it. And most of them do. And then there's still the few, like you said, that are right hand over left. And I would remember, okay, look at your hands not the palms up, but palms down. Look at your hands, make a low, uppercase L. That's your left. And then sometimes yeah. they would still hold up the right hand. And I'm like, yeah. what am I doing wrong? Like, am I, am I, am I not speaking this right? You know, you're just sometimes <laughs> yeah. like, that's an L to you? I'm like, right. maybe, you know, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. And I'm looking at them and they're looking at me and I'm like, an L. <laughs> like, right, right. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I, anyways, yeah, I'm, I'm always mind blown or like how long it takes even upper elementary to make a circle. And you're just like, oh, I know. Shouldn't be this hard. Right. It's really just not a thing. Anyway. I've been doing this since kindergarten. <laughs> know, but then it's also like, I have to touch a girl and I have to touch a boy. Right. And it becomes right. a thing. Yeah. yeah fun times. Exactly. <laughs> so moving back to the conversation, you have a free resource to help teachers get started about yeah. using recorder. So where can they find this and what is this resource all about? Yeah, sure. So it's um it's on the website, Mr. Henry's Music and if you go there, you, there's there'll be a drop down menu, and uh, it, it'll it's, it's called Modern Recorder Lab is the name of the curriculum. But within mm -hmm. within that tab, you can get the the freebie. And so actually, that freebie is mostly of what you would find um, in the the full resource of the of lesson one. So like that ping pong battle game is in there, um, and and ideas for that. And uh, there's videos in there. So the um, the left hand over right song is in there. And that one, that one's also on YouTube as well. So there's slides, there's uh, some games in there. Um, and then of course, you know, videos. What's, what's nice about being able to use it in there is you can, you would create an account, you log into the account and you can access it anytime. And actually there's, there's even another, I have another freebie that has yeah. just tons of resources as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, so, I'd love for you to share it, yeah. Yeah, so so that's all on the website. If you just go there, you could sign up for each one individually 
and um, it's all within your account. So you would just log into the account and can access that and present it that way. So um, yeah, so that's that's where that is, and that it's it's really kind of giving an idea of what's in the full curriculum, mm -hmm. um, and but but giving a lot of these you know basic ideas uh, to get things mm -hmm. started. So yeah. so a teacher who wants to dive deeper into this and they would love mm -hmm. to use the full curriculum, talk to them about what is in there and what notes does it help them teach to their students sure. and all those yeah. things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's. Um, it's a pretty, uh, it's, there's a lot of resources in there and really what it's doing is going through, you know, lesson one, and it gives you an outline of, of what's going on using slides, videos. And so if you wanted to follow it exact, mm -hmm. I mean, you could just, you know, you just go to the next thing. And of course there's lesson plans that go with it. So the lesson plans follow the slides. So for example, if the slide is talking about the echo game, which is a mm -hmm. game that's in there. Um, it'll next to that, that picture of the slide that you would see as you're presenting it in the live setting within the lesson plan, it gives you a description of, you know, what to do and some ideas of things to do. So that's like the live teaching resource is a section. And that's basically everything you would need to use within your, you know, teaching uh, teaching live to the kids. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So slides, games, um, the videos, of course, you know. And so that curriculum goes through, uh, you know, your basics, like we had talked about with, mm -hmm. with the type of area you're going to use. And then it gets into the B note and the kids play a tune called the B note rap and they're just playing the B note. This is kind of what I was talking about earlier where I always felt like playing B-A-G right away with a song it's just too fast. I just think it's too yeah, fast. Absolutely. But I can understand why someone would be like, well, yeah, but like just playing the B note is kind of boring. Mm -hmm. So that's where this these videos really come in um, because they're engaging, they're fun, they're upbeat, they're um, even though they're playing just one note, they feel like they're playing a real song, mm -hmm. you know? So um, so that it's it starts with the B note. And then it goes to A, and then it goes to G, continues on to the low E, to low D. And within each within each uh, song, the main songs, the students are trying to earn lab coats. So it's the white lab coat, it's the yellow lab coat. And so like the white lab coat is the B note rap. And they're just playing the B note, like I mentioned, with quarter notes and quarter rest. Very simple. But they're going to be working on making sure that they're holding it the correct way, using the correct air. But what's great about that is, and this is you know what I was saying earlier with with students who always struggle to get that white belt in karate, you know the the students in this curriculum they're going to be able to get the white lab coat, the yellow, the orange, mm -hmm. um, because the songs are just a little bit easier. So I f I feel like they they feel like they're accomplishing. They are accomplishing mm -hmm. something. And if they don't get past that, you know, that's okay. We, we'll try and get them there. But they do, f there's, I just feel like there's a lot more success because it goes slower. But by the kids going slower, by, by the time you get to those more advanced songs, they're almost like sight reading it. So I, it's really spending time on B and then B and A mm -hmm. with a tune called the Annoying Siren Song because when you play the B and the A, it's. I love that. So, yeah. So I made a song called the Annoying Siren Song. They love that one. It's a lot of fun. Um. So and then we get to just playing G and then we start to play B A and G and actually I spend a good bit of time just having them play B A and G for the next three lab coats. Um, and then, like I said, we get into low E, then, then D and that really brings you through like the, to the black lab coat, which would kind of be like, that's where you could end it. But then I have, uh, the super lab because the whole thing is the modern recorder lab. So the super lab then goes even further. It gets into the high C, the high D and the F sharp. Mm. Um, and the super lab portion of the curriculum um, that, you know, that's, that's, you could do it. You could not like my, 
my students didn't get to the super lab in third grade this year. So we'll do super lab stuff next year. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, so there's, there's that whole section to it. And actually that section I'm continually adding to, so I'll be adding more songs to that, that include, um, you know, all the slides and all mm -hmm. that good stuff. So, and like I said, there's, there's uh, lesson plans that go along with it, but uh, alongside that, I even will go through, I have videos of me just going through the lesson plans and further explaining what to do. So it's really like having like a course where I'm, I'm explaining what's going on. So, and those can be, you know, some of them are a little long, so like 20, 40 minutes of 20 to 40 minutes of me going through the lesson plan, but that's, and that's, if you want to, you're, you know, like maybe you're just starting and you really want to make sure you're understanding everything. And I usually give even more pointers within that. So, mm -hmm. so within those, you can just read the lesson plans or you could go through the videos as well. And you know, those videos I'm sure could probably count towards some sort of PDE. I need to figure that out. Mm, I'm you know, sure. Like PDE yeah. hours, right. Mm -hmm. So I mean, your, your curriculum stuff, right? I mean, the teachers, they get to count that as professional development. Yes. Well, yes. Um, it just depends on the school or district or state, gotcha. but okay. I say, yes, you get a certificate, but then it, you got to ask because I know, yes, right. everybody, everybody's different. Some will accept yeah. some will, it just, so yes, I think providing yeah. it as long as they know you provide it. And right. then that's how I would word it. It's just, it's up yeah. to you. you know? I mean, yeah, it's up yeah, to your right. school. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's cool. So, but anyway, so that's, that's some of the things that are included. I also have a whole centers section. Hmm. So um, I really like doing centers, especially with recorder. Uh, and, and as I mentioned, this is, you know, students are auditioning for it. You don't have to do that. Um, Bruce Fight, the um, mm -hmm. my friend who I do the podcast with, he did the, the the curriculum this year, and I said, "Did you have them like audition?" He said, "Nah, I just we just played through it." Oh, okay, cool. Like, so you could do it, or you you don't have to do it. Yeah. But um, but I did do that, and so like there's charts that are already printed out. You just print them out, and um, I even have a, a bulletin board display stuff you can laminate, cut it out, and it's all ready to go. Um, there's letters that I include in there. Like if, uh, like I talk about different ways that you can have the students getting the recorders and there's letters in there that are pre-written. You just go in and it'll force you to make a copy and then you can put your own spin on it and things mm -hmm. like that. So it's really just trying to, you know, I think about when I started Mm -hmm. what I would have wanted if I didn't know how to do this at all. Right. And that's really what I was trying to put together is something where someone's going to be able to either use this part of it or not use this part or do the whole thing because you're not really sure of what to do. Mm -hmm. And um, I just, I wish I had this thing when I was first mm -hmm. starting out, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, but it really just has, it, it covers everything even down to the ping pong balls. Uh, I, I have a, page you would click on which shows all the things if you wanted to buy those things all of those things are there with amazon mm -hmm. links you know things like mm -hmm. that so that you know people can just load up their shopping yeah. cart with what they would need for the Perfect. curriculum and yeah. it's already you know just ready to roll so awesome. so there's a lot of i i'm i was always thinking of trying to save teachers time as mm -hmm. much time as possible by getting a lot of these little things that you kind of don't even think about when teaching the recorder, right? Yeah. The letter that has to go home, how to actually, you know, the process that you might have to take through your school in order to obtain the recorders, things like that. So there's, there's all kinds of discussions with that. And I, and I mentioned this before I was going to elaborate a little more as the centers. Mm -hmm. So yeah, centers, um, this is where I was going with that <laughs> centers. I love using centers or if you are going to audition, or even if you're not. But for me, it was always great because all the other students are doing all these other activities that are laid out and ready to roll. Um, and then I can focus with that, just that group of four mm -hmm. that are auditioning. Instead of having one kid come and audition for the whole class or doing it while they're, you know, there's all this noise going on. Having the centers is really great for the auditioning. Because mm -hmm. then the other kids are, um, you know, 
doing other things that are testing their knowledge. Absolutely. So yeah. for each and for each uh, section, there's a center's activity. So if you're doing, if you're on plane B and A note, there's a whole slew of things you could do centers just focusing on B and A. If you're doing the E and the G note, there's a centers just for that, that focus just on those notes. So that's, um, that's another section of it. So it's, yeah, I'm just a very comprehensive um, program. Yeah. yeah. Out of curiosity, all that sounds amazing. Yeah. Out of curiosity, how do you break up teaching recorder for third, fourth, and fifth? How do you make it, you know, I know it's mm -hmm. like going to be a little bit different, or do you do a lot of the similar activities with them as well? You, you know what? Normally fifth grade, I don't have them playing recorders. Okay. I just do it in third and fourth grade. And third grade, they're going through kind of like, like I was saying how my kids got to Old McDonald's. So that's mm -hmm. playing um, B, A, G, E, and D. Yeah. Low, low E, low D. So that's kind of where they're, they're getting to. And then in fourth grade, I'll continue on to where they're playing more difficult songs, playing the high C, playing the high D, the gotcha. F sharp. So, and I probably won't work with the fourth graders as much as I did with the third graders, because I like usually around fourth grade is when I start doing ukulele mm -hmm. and then fifth grade, we really do ukulele mm -hmm. uh, and other projects. I like to do a lot of project stuff for fifth grade project based things. Yeah. So, I'm the same. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's up to the individual teacher, like just knowing your students and where they're at and what you want to do with them and then go yeah. from there. Yeah. Because yeah. I know it's different across the board. Some do third, fourth, fifth, some do recorder with fourth, fifth, some do third, fourth. And so sure. just know your students and what they need and go from there. So, yeah. 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 And actually that's not even entirely true. This year um, I did have my fifth graders do it because they, because of COVID, mm. they didn't really get to do it. So that was the only that's time true. that I had done it and they were great. I mean, they, they love it. So it's, it's one of those things where if I continue to add more, I might have, fifth graders really even do more complex things. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, Bill, I have loved this conversation. I mean, I've learned a lot from you just, in, just from sitting here with you. And so some things I'm really excited to apply And this court, the course is amazing and check out the free resource he mentioned. And before we go, you've already mentioned your website, but let's go ahead and have you mention it again and let everybody yeah, sure. know where else they can connect with you online. Yeah, sure. So um, Mr. Henry's music world.com. Uh, that's where, you know, the center of everything is. Uh, but, you know, YouTube as well, if you just put in, even if you just put in Google Mr. Henry's music, it should it should pop up. Uh, a lot of good free resources there. Uh, you had mentioned Four Corners games. I, I actually have some Four Corners games Ooh. in there. They're, uh, yeah, they've been a lot of fun. So, and I'm going to come out with more of those actually. So, awesome. but um, yeah, and then checking out the music podcast for kids. Um, we've had a, a lot of teachers using that resource, uh, you know, for substitutes. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a, it's the, those episodes are story. They're story based and they're, they're highly produced. Um, and it's Mr. Fight and I are going through some sort of bizarre epic journey where we're learning about music along the way, you know? So, mm -hmm. you know, we're traveling back and learning about Beethoven or, um, we we the most recent season was all about the elements of of music so beat meter rhythm pitch melody dynamics we go through all of those and kind of have a story behind each of them trying to teach those concepts so awesome. so yeah so checking out the podcast the music podcast for kids um yeah those are definitely the the best ways to get in contact so Great. Thank and you. all of these links will be in the show notes, everybody. So make sure you check them out and definitely go to Bill's website and look at all of the amazing content he has to offer. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I've loved this conversation. Thanks, Jessica. Great to be here. 
Well, hey there. Thank you so much for listening into the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast. There is an exclusive Facebook group just for listeners of this podcast and any elementary music teacher called the Elementary Music Teacher Community Facebook Group. Come on over and join us there where we have conversations around the podcast episodes and encourage each other each and every week. And also head to my website, thedomesticmusician.com. I have some free resources there that you can download to help you gain traction in your classroom today as well as the blog and the membership site and all kinds of other goodies to help you keep going in your music teaching journey. I cannot wait to keep connecting with you and encouraging you and spurring you on in your journey of teaching elementary music. Hang in there, have an amazing week, and I will see you soon.